this very quick video I'm going to show you how to solve the problem when you are dubbing loosens when you dub it onto the thread and a couple of more tricks but I'll keep it short so what happens we take a dubbing and let's go till the end point where I want my dubbing to be so let's say I want to finish my fly here to finish the abdomen so I'll just proceed with my dubbing and dub it like so I'll make a dubbing noodle that's according to my needs at the moment so it's not about the fly this time it's all about what you do so as you can notice I left a little bit of empty thread here so I, I can just dub because if I keep it if I try to dub it here very close to the hook I just won't be able my fingers are too thick and it's not easy but if I try to do this and come back with dubbing it will build up unnecessary uh, unnecessary build up here obviously not with this thread because this is 18 through, the, through 0 but there is another thing to consider here it's to slide your dubbing up but what happens often is that this dubbing here can loosen up a bit what I like to do is I like to rotate my vise if I have for you if you have possibility do that because you get this very close you can now access it with your fingers and tighten the noodle so it's a very simple trick to do another trick you can do to do this is let's back up a little bit and let's just slide this dubbing so I have just a little bit of bare thread as you can see here so I'll go back and go back and just start wrapping here obviously I left it too short at this moment so let's show you that properly so I'll just do it a little bit again now I'll go back with my thread and this is the, the, the place where I want to start yeah then just start wrapping it towards the uh, towards the head and here it is perfectly dubbed without any bulk build up and whatever you unnecessary things you may need Another thing to consider is, now I'll just go here and I'll create an uh, underbody with uh, thread here, obviously, because I need more friction. So I already selected three CDC feathers, and as you can see, these are small. Size 12 hook, but very small, uh, small CDC feathers. It's primarily because I want to use uh, most of these feathers. I don't want to waste a lot and then it's triangle shape that will meet all the barbs at the top I talked that about that a lot in my in my videos with CDC feathers because I like this shape a lot at least for this kind of wings or upright wings as well uh, now what happens you tie it in like this and it's easy to tie because first it's small and then small feather obviously have uh, has uh, thinner rachis which will in turn give you easier it's, it's going to be easier to cut and build up here won't be as big now I try to cut it uh, by, by an angle here to taper it and this taper here is actually going to help me uh, to create uh, well taper again uh, well, I back up uh, I backed up to remove those locking wraps. I don't want any excessive buildup, obviously. And then I'll just go down, creating this taper. Now it was uh, this is obviously a little bit abrupt, but never never mind. Now I can go back. Now this is very strong. I can create a dubbing loop. So if I have created a little bit better taper with my scissors. I wouldn't have this bump over here that I had to fill in with my thread, so that's my mistake here. Now, let's go with a little bit of dubbing. What I like to do is I like to make it sparse like this and long. As you can see, it's relatively long. So I'll just pinch it, insert it into the thread. Obviously, it's going to have some excess that after twisting will fall off so let's go I twist it and when it's relatively tight I tighten it a little bit more that's why I use GSP 
because GSP will allow me to cinch this more. As you can see, there is some excess, but not too much. I'll just return it to my dubbing box, dubbing dispenser, and then hold the feather. You don't want it displaced after this first wrap. Okay, sorry for my neighbors. And then just wrap nice thorax on, on this fly. Nice buggy that will imitate the legs. And I cinch down on it after, you can see like, I hold the whole fly and I pull on it. And that's it. Now I used a little bit more than I wanted, which is okay. I'll just tie it off here. And that's okay. Back. Don't cut your tying thread, that's why I like to use. Um, I will show you now. I let my hang, uh, thread, tying thread hang down, but dubbing loop I go 90 degrees or upwards, so it's not in the same plane, because sometimes you can just go with your scissors and uh, cut it by accident, which is not very desirable. Like imagine cutting your tying thread and you're like finishing off the fly. Just move this these hairs away from me and then do a couple of turns to go back with my thread. I mean I can go uh, back and forth with the uh, making web finish like that but honestly I don't like it. That's all just one, two, it's flattened thread, three and four. Okay let me see yeah, I can use maybe a little bit more, but this is okay. Now, I made a mistake in one of the videos that I previously made. I didn't pay attention how I held my scissors, so I just want to be oops, more cautious now. And that's it. Cut it very close. Last step. Not the most important, obviously, but last one is to brush out this fly. I like to do it sideways. And as you can see, the body is still compact. It will penetrate surface a little bit better. But the thorax is having giving this fly this bugginess and makes it irresistible, irresistible to fish. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please Give it a like, subscribe and see you next week.